First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the piece that broke out of the sole and I'm going to glue it back in. But first, I tried fitting it back in, but it doesn't want to go in there. Um, so I'm going to file the corners, the like the front corners down a little bit so it'll ease in a bit better. It's going to take a little bit off. And this is cast iron. Cast iron is very brittle. You know, I talked in that video before about wood not equaling metal. But if this plane was wood and dropped on the floor like that, you could pick it up and use it again. Wood is resilient. Certainly more resilient than cheap cast iron. So I don't know how much of that I need to take off. It's kind of difficult to file. Maybe I should speed up this part. Okay, it's not bad. All right, I gave the epoxy overnight to dry, and I'm just gonna trim off the stuff that kind of squeezed out around the edges here. And uh, it's pretty flat, but it can be uh, improved for sure. I also added a lot of uh, epoxy on the inside right here. And my thinking there is that, okay, this part that broke off is uh, ground flat, and then it's kind of dipped in behind it so that and when I glued it back on, you know, the blade is going to be pressing on that ground part again. And, of course, the glue joint is not as strong as the original metal. So my thinking here is that I would fill up behind it with the epoxy, and that will give some place for the blade to press as well. So I did that after this actually set up, and then I let the whole thing set up overnight. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stroke it back and forth on my... Uh, sharpening stone here with some oil and try to get the base flattened or at least as flat as it was before. Okay, you know what? That doesn't look too bad. Sure, it's not as pretty as a fully polished uh, sole on one of these high-end planes, but it's a Bach plane. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat. Despite what everybody else <laughs> will work and will tell you, it doesn't have to be perfectly flat. And this never was, according to what I see here. But the important thing is that I got the a uh, piece that I glued back in, completely flush and flat with everything. I can't feel, like I can't feel any difference here. And uh, if there was a difference, you'd be able to feel it. So while I got the stone out, I'm gonna uh, uh, resharpen the blade. I've got one of my jigs here. This is the one for plain blades and for chisels. I'm not using it with the hole that I made for it. I'm just using it right here on the workbench like I've got it set up. So I'll do the coarse side of the stone first, and then I'll flip it over, readjust the angle, and do the secondary bevel right at the tip.
And that's it. It doesn't really take long at all on the fine side to get that secondary bevel set up. Now I'm going to take the stone out of the sharpener and rub off the burr on the back. And then of course I can take it right up to splitting sharpness. If I strop it. So I'm going to do that. Since that's the stick that I used to lift up the stone in the first place, right here. Get that happening. Some of the mucky oil off my hands. And uh, here's the blade. I'm going to do the back first. Just drag it back. Make sure the whole thing gets contact with it. And that looks pretty good. And then I'll do the top in the same way. And uh, wow, that looks sharp. And you know what? It is sharp. It's sharp enough. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to put the plane back together and we'll see how it works. All right, I got myself a piece of hard maple. Here are my um, gear vise. And let's see how it cuts. I have to admit that the throat is a little bit too closed, I think. And I really should have checked this before I glued this part in. But I can get in there with a file after and open it up a little bit more. But it might work okay. Let's, let's just try it and see how it goes. Okay? It's peeling off shavings out the corner, no problem. A little not deep enough for a surface cut. And my vise is not tight enough. It's all part of the fun, though. <laughs> anyway, it seems to be seems to be working good, except for the grain direction on this wood, which is kind of all over the place. Hang on, now I'll flip it over, and maybe that'll make me look better. And maybe I should get the camera in closer. It's still holding, so. Look at those shavings. You notice that whenever someone's using a hand plane in the video, they take the time to pull the shavings out of the plane to show, ooh, look how nice and clean the shavings are. Anyway, uh, I don't have a lot of faith in this. It's held up after that bit there, but I can definitely see a point where that's going to break again so i don't know maybe what i'll do is throw this in the garbage <laughs> and build one out of wood i don't know i've got a plain blade where is it it should be here i bought this um, eight years ago, seven years ago, and never did you like you can see the dust on the box. I never did use it. I was going to make a plane from it. This is in a a real proper A2 tool steel plane blade. That's two inches wide and. Uh, Geez, it looks like it's like three sixteenths of an inch thick. 0.187. That's uh, probably three sixteenths. <laughs> I can't do the math. But uh, yeah, heavy, blocky. Maybe I should make 
maybe I should make a combination stainless steel base or sole and wooden body plane. Oh, and just a reminder that you will not be seeing, <laughs> you will not be seeing a plane build using this blade on this channel. You will not see it here. You will see it on my main channel because that's where the builds happen. This channel is for me talking and messing around with stuff that I'm not confident will work. Okay? If you like that kind of stuff, stick around here. If you don't like that kind of stuff, be- I hear it's month. Madman month. Jesus, people can be cruel. It's not my build, it's my personality. They say I'm a madman part, but I'm not mad at anyone. Honest, I'm not.